All right, let's start a new chapter, uh, fiction. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. So, uh, till now you already know what really friction is. As you all know that friction is a force that always opposes uh, the motion of the body. Okay. So, you al already have uh, uh, the familiarity with friction. Okay. So, now we basically uh, try to go and increase our uh, in-depth knowledge of this topic. Uh, friction and how uh, basically from the practical aspects. So friction is a reaction force that resists uh, impending okay, uh, motion between two contacting surfaces, surfaces due to roughness, inner surface adhesion, surface contamination and possible surface deformations. Okay. So friction force always acts tangent or parallel to the contacting surfaces. Okay. So you already know it will always act tangent uh, are parallel to the contacting surfaces like if we have this surface over here so uh, this is the applied force P okay so where will be the friction force acting it will basically act uh, if you look at it it will basically act along this direction it will act along uh, this direction okay so what he is trying to say you over here is that uh, the main uh, aspect over here is that uh, it is the parallel uh, or tangent. Okay, so these are the main points. Advantages of the friction is again this is chapter eight. It, it, this is very important. High friction is desirable in machine elements like clutches, brakes, clamps, belt drives, screws, and wedges. Okay, it is very very uh, advantageous. Okay. Also, friction allows us to walk and help maintain the equilibrium. Okay, very important. If the friction is not there between our feet and uh, the contacting surfaces, we all shall not be able to move properly and will be basically hitting with each other while walking in a uh, uh, in a class or in a basically if you go in a mall. Okay, if you do not have if zero friction on the surface, so we shall not be able to walk each other. Okay, and slipping and hitting with each other. So, friction is also important in manufacturing processes, like he is saying friction is uh, machine elements like brakes, okay, like you know in a car you have got like brake shoe and we have when uh, basically uh, the, uh, we apply the pressure, uh, the caliper uh, strikes the brake shoes, uh, touches the brake shoes and uh, basically because of friction uh, is generated and your car basically retards and stops. Same with the clutches. Uh, and uh, the clamps uh, of the vices, if you look at it, uh, the clamps of the vices here in which you put the object and basically tighten it up and it holds it in its position, screws and wedges. Okay. Friction is important in manufacturing processes like friction, welding, friction, saw blade, metal cuttings and welding processes. Okay. It's very important. Otherwise, if they, they are not there, these uh, uh, processes could not be uh, successfully completed. Okay, we cannot do it. Uh, saw blade is a hexa uh, blade for cutting. Okay, friction saw blade, and uh, again it is very important in friction welding. Okay, uh, again these are manufacturing processes. Uh, you will study in your second year. Okay, then there is a uh, triboelectric generators, which are uh, basically devices to generate electricity when friction exists between two dissimilar metals. Then friction, these are the advantages. What will be the disadvantages? Friction can be unwanted in like machining processes such as lathe, turning, okay. You do not want more friction, okay. You have thermodynamic machines, anti-friction bearings and sliding surfaces. Another unwanted effect of friction is the wearing of material, okay. The more friction is there, the more wear and basically uh, your material will become uneven. It will not perform its intended functions, okay. Uh, and another important uh, disadvantage is the generation of heat. Okay, one of another disadvantage is that your missiles, when they go at a uh, higher altitude, greater the friction, uh, the surface will get worn out, and your missile uh, may basically not reach its target, and it can blow in the sky because of the greater friction. So it has to be properly streamlined to reduce friction at the tip of the surface of the missile. Uh, okay, what will be the causes of the dry friction? Okay, so if you look at it, uh, this is the body, uh, how friction is basically being uh, generated. 
so causes uh, no surface is smooth and contact it contains many uh, micro irregularities it means he is trying to say that all surfaces whatever the surface it has small aspersions Uh, small hills and valleys and pits and bumps between the two surfaces. No two surfaces. Even the mirror is also never uh, perfect. It it also has some small hills, valleys and pits and roughness. The micro irregularities can cause uh, this micro irregularities can cause interlocking uh, between the contacting surfaces, which results in frictional resistance. Okay, uh, it results in the frictional resistances. Uh, like if you look at it here, we have. Uh, Uh, the friction because of these aspersions, uh, these are the uh, irregularities. Uh, you can have lot of infinite uh, uh, frictional, uh, uh, sub-frictional acting at those irregularities uh, points, at those points like delta F1, delta F2. This is the frictional uh, component at those uh, irregularities. And again, uh, since the weight will be there, there will be one normal reaction, then there will be another normal reaction, and there will be a third normal reaction. You can call it uh, infinite number of points over there. We we'll call them as delta n, n. and again uh, we will assume that uh, the frictional component delta f and delta f2 will be all uh, constant along the line of the action. Uh, but the normal reaction because uh, of these hits and valleys, it will be different. You can see different normal reactions acting. And if you look at it here, uh, it will be basically uh, forming uh, uh, basically. Uh, a load, a loading, a loading uh, pattern uh, will be created, uh, uh, which is some sort of a trapezoidal in nature. If you look at it, it will be some sort of trapezoidal in nature. Uh, and again, this loading pattern will be a function of the normal reaction, as you can see. And uh, as you know, all those uh, loading patterns will have some sort of a uh, centroid, as you know it very well. So we can basically assume that this loading pattern could be divided uh, into. Uh, like here to here, uh, a rectangular distribution, and below this it will be a. Uh, if you look at it, it will be a triangular distribution. And if you solve this thing, if you solve it, you will be getting basically. If you solve it, you will be getting a, a resultant centroid, which will be acting at uh, this point. Okay, you can say. Are resultant centroids to be acting at some this point. Okay, uh, this will be the centroid of this uh, loading as a result of this normal distribution. Okay, uh, so you can always calculate uh, this centroid uh, very easily. Okay, and if you want to go in, in depth over here, is basically at this point of the excursion, uh, the hills and valleys and the pits camp, you will have one normal reaction. One frictional component, and as a result, there is one uh, basically reactive force components being generated also as a result of this normal and frictional components. And you can basically, uh, if you calculate, uh, if, if say this will be your uh, delta n one, this will be delta f one, and this is the resultant of the reactive component. Okay, so there, there will be infinite micro irregularities. There will be infinite micro irregularities over here. Okay, it at the contact surfaces whose resultant will be given as uh, at this point as F and N. Okay, uh, all right. And then one more thing which is very important is there. Uh, is that. Uh, If you look at it, uh, the mechanics over here, uh, like this weight is acting over here, the normal reaction is here, and the P is there. This is basically over no dimensions over given over here. But when we see as we move along the force P, this uh, trapezoidal distribution, the centroid will be acting at uh, this point. Okay, as you can see, the centroid point here, green point. So the centroid will be acting at this point. Okay. The centroid will be acting at this point. So, if you look at it at this point, so when we apply the force P and keep on increasing this force P, okay, if we keep on increasing this force P, okay, this force P over here, if we keep on increasing it, okay, uh, this body will starts to move. But you know, at actually at this uh, point, uh, as it moves, 
there will be more frictional forces there will be more frictional forces and as a result of that uh, there is a possibility that this body will starts to move and there is also a possibility that it can tip this body can tip and this body can tip uh, where it can tip basically at this point if you look at it this is becoming yellow it can tip at this corner point okay it can tip at this point and what, what will happen because of this load it can basically fall down it can basically tip down like this because of the force okay so what to do what uh, so we will assume that uh, if uh, this force is basically acting uh, with, uh, at a centroid we will assume that the resultant normal reaction is acting and this force is acting and we have w and we have the p here okay so if, you know, whenever there is tipping you know there is basically a moment uh, which is acting at point o so if we take uh, summation of uh, the moments at o okay we take summation of all the moments at o okay we take summation of uh, the moments at which point we will take it at o summation of moments at o this point so f and h will uh, nullify so we will end up uh, with uh, the relation as the at point o w force into perpendicular distance x equals to t the applied force in which the body is going to move times the, the moment arm h so w into x is equals to p into h so from here basically uh, you can able to calculate uh, this x okay this x okay so another very important point if by chance unfortunately if the force is applied and body tips if the body tips so he says such a scenario happens so he says that uh, about to take place then n will act as as a by 2 so if this happens so the this n which is acting and the body starts to tip we means the moment is applied so what happens that uh, this n okay will shift over this point this n will shift at this point this will be your new n this will be your new n and uh, this n will not be there okay which means that the n will shift at a distance from this o from this point to this point okay and what is this distance this distance if you look at it is a by 2 okay that is is trying to tell you this distance is a by 2 okay so this is just a brief introduction about the friction its nature its advantages and uh, if you uh, look at it over here also like uh, we have uh, uh, further information like friction is a retarding force that opposes motion there are different types of friction you got like static friction okay we have also got uh, kinetic friction and fluid friction okay uh, we will be studying the static friction and kinetic friction will come under domain of dry or uh, coulombic friction okay and so you can see these are the aspersions hills and valleys explained over here to us okay if the force is applied in this direction the normal direction is here and the uh, uh, friction component will be here okay so this you must remember okay now we basically uh, try to further uh, go uh, and try we will study uh, as the regimes of motion we will try friction so we stop here and uh, we will study with uh, start uh, with the next uh, video of regimes of motion during dry friction so all right let's say i thank you and let's uh